Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. We've got what I believe to be a really good episode for you this week. Skip killed a great buck uh, during the past week and he called that deer in. So in this week's episode, we're gonna jump back and forth and talk about calling strategies as we get into the rut. There may be some more action for you by the end of the day because I'm gonna go out and hunt a spot and uh, show you the results of my evening hunt at the end of this episode. But that's what we're gonna focus on. We're gonna focus on Skip's big deer and then the strategies that we use for calling. So I'm gonna start that off. And I have a, kind of a, a very maybe unique philosophy on calling. I don't like to rattle. I just don't like carrying the antlers. So I don't do any rattling. So all of my calling is either grunting or snort wheezing. And I don't like to blind call. I don't like to give the deer something that they can home in on and then they come in hunting me. I feel like I have a hard enough time staying uh, you know, low impact and, and keeping from being picked off in the woods than to be calling attention to where I'm at. And I know it works for people. And like I said, you know, my, my philosophy is unique. Uh, I don't put much pressure on the deer. I only call to bucks that I've seen, that I'm interested in bringing within bow range that I think are shooters. So I grunt, and usually what I'll do is I'll raise the volume of my grunts until the buck stops and looks. As soon as he stops and looks, then I know he's heard it, then I'll be quiet. If he starts going again, I'll call to him again. I may snort wheeze at that point, but I usually don't um, do a lot of calling. I wanna pique his curiosity and make him commit to coming in. In spite of how narrow and restrictive my calling philosophy is, I'll bet you half of the bucks that I've killed over the years, I've called in either with the grunt call or the snort wheeze. Uh, so I'm heading out to a redneck blind right now. And uh, while I'm walking to the blind, let's check in with Skip and get a look at that buck that he killed this past week. So, bringing a, uh, basically a whole Christmas tree up with us to decorate tonight. Uh, the stand was kind of out in the open. I hung a new one in a draw. So this little draw, we're hunting the same deer. And I was going to give it a longer break, but um, the conditions are really nice. The wind's perfect. Uh, I hung a new stand and we're going to decorate it a little bit. And if that big typical, the king buck, were to come out, it'd be awesome. Uh, again, really easy spot to get into. Um, new spot right maybe two or three hundred yards uh, from where the deer are bedding and we're blowing the wind out of the south and I don't think most of the deer should get downwind of us so that's a really nice thing and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah I can hit that scrape. I don't know what to say like my first shot just I was right dead nuts and I don't know if I ticked the trigger when I shouldn't have or whatever but my shot did not hit where it was supposed to uh, I mean I, I don't have an explanation I was dead nuts on him so I don't I don't know and then he came down 
another 10 yards and I had a pocket since I know the first shot hit him and I had to get another arrow in him and I I, I, I hope I made a good shot. I haven't wounded a deer in way over a decade. I mean, even a doe. So I hope he's dead. I don't wound deer ever. And I hope he is pummeled. I feel like that second shot just got, got right in the money zone. I put a drone right in there, uh, full pass through. So he is giant typical. He's six. I've watched that deer since he's two. I just want to pop to the top of the hill. We'll take a look. I mean, two, the second shot was definitely nasty, nasty. So I'm just going to pop to the top of the hill uh, and that won't screw anything up. Um, but it's definitely bubbling blood. And if he's not there, then we'll wait. But I'll be able to see from there, and then we'll also be able to get out of here if we need to. But, I mean, definitely dead deer. But if if I have any any um, doubt that he's not dead, we'll just back out, and I won't bump him by going up right up here. But he is just gushing blood from two wounds. So, so spraying... Spraying blood trail. I just walked to the top of that hill and he went. He was not at the top of the hill looking over, so I'm just gonna get out of here and um, look for him in the morning. So uh, I know I know from that vantage point we'd be able to see out and he could be further in there. Maybe he ran for the timber. So we'll wait for tomorrow. See what happens. So there's crows in here. We watched where this deer hit the timber yesterday and we stopped there. And there's crows right here, so that's our our hope. There's a whole bunch of blood right there. Look at this one. Bunch of blood. Big old pile of blood. Look at that. What the heck? <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> I'm so relieved. I did not sleep well last night, beating myself up. Oh, the crows found them. Yeah. Um, I'm not. Sh I'm not exactly sure if I hit a limb or or what I did, and I don't, I don't want to make an excuse, this is on me, I beat myself up all night over it, uh, trying to figure out what happened, and um, really discouraged, I didn't sleep well at all last night thinking about it, so the reality was, is uh, he was dead last night, um, we could have, we could have came in here and found him last night, but I did not want to take the chance, um, so again, the downside, I beat myself up, I'm going to practice, uh, I am not proud to uh, not hit a deer where I'm aiming, but I know he's fully mature. I know he's six or seven and uh, I don't care what he scores. He's an old, old buck and it's just cool to have the history with him. And for October, I'm absolutely stoked. Uh, I'm very, very fortunate uh, that this all came together and uh, got a very mature buck in October. So we're going to get him dragged out and take some pictures of him. So we're a couple days post hunt here, had a little time to reflect. Um, again, 90% of that day in my mind is positive. Um, there's definitely some things I wish that went differently uh, and some learning experiences. So, um, you know, my, my feeling is this, is um, hopefully the vast, vast majority of the times things work out great, uh, things work out perfectly. Uh, but when they don't, I think it's important to show it. Sometimes um, you see all the hunts that go perfectly well and at Midwest Whitetail, one thing I've always appreciated is they show the challenges and they show the, the honesty of um, the difficulties in hunting. So uh, I just thought it'd be important to just explain. There are definitely some things I was really, really upset with myself about during this hunt, um, but uh, fundamentally, uh, I want to show it all and um, there were some really positive things I took out of this hunt too and I did recover the deer, the, the meat was good, um, some lessons learned for the future and we got a, a really mature dominant buck down so that was really positive. 
So another thing I learned from this hunt that I wanted to talk about more, the calling. Here's my takeaway with the calling in October and uh, into maybe the pre-rut early November is if you can identify a buck that is aggressive, that's dominant. Uh, for example, he's making scrapes and he's not within range and you want to pull him in. What I did in this hunt and what I did in those, those other hunts and a lot of times throughout the years is I just give a couple light grunt calls just to tell him that there's another buck in his turf and he's going to want to come in and investigate and bump him out of there. For me, I do not get real aggressive with rattling and grunting. I don't do a lot of blind rattling and grunting. Maybe in early November I'll do a little bit more. Um, I think it's overdone a lot of times, but if you can identify a buck that's acting aggressive, that is marking his territory, or is dominating over other bucks, those are prime deer to call if they're out of range and you need to pull them in. If they're naturally going to come by, I might just leave it alone and not call to them. But if I need to call them in, it's very effective. It worked yet again on this buck. Uh, it didn't work totally perfect how I'd like it to, but it did work. And uh, we got a fantastic mature buck down. Um, and I'm really happy about, about the end result and about what I learned from the whole experience. Jared, looks like Jared passed some of his luck on this after all, huh? Look at that, that ain't a bad shed. Right in the creek bottom right here. Well, we at least we got one side. To, maybe we can find another that has some rattling horns. <laughs> We're back in the public again tonight. Uh, tonight we decided to head to a different spot than the piece we were on a couple days ago. And uh, in order to get into the spot I wanted to be in, we had to walk a river all the way back in here and actually at the river bottom uh, I found a pretty nice shed on the way in so that's a good sign and right when we hopped out of the river uh, to come towards this flat there's a couple good rubs and a big scrape about 50 yards uh, to the north of this tree so there's a bunch of deer sign in here we got crop fields off to the north and the farmer was actually cutting uh, it looked like a cornfield right when we pulled up too so that's a good sign there's a couple of good runs on both sides of the tree here so hopefully the deer are moving tonight I think we drilled them. You smoked him. 
Are you kidding? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna fall out of the tree. Did that really just happen? Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me, dude? You could have seriously happened to this mean to them. Dude, 15 yards right here. You can see the little knock right there, 15 yards. Well, we heard those two. We heard those two really deep grunts over here. And then I grunted what? I threw a couple of them out and then I grunted again. Beeline right for the tree. Yes. Oh my gosh, give me something. Hey, I think I just smoked one. I think I just smoked one. Yeah, dead serious. Pretty good one too, 15 yards. I heard him grunt and I threw out like four grunts. And he makes a beeline right for the tree, wondering where it came from. 15 yards right in front of me. Okay. Alright, sounds good. Alright, see ya. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, bro. Thanks. It's not done yet. Not over yet. We'll see. Oh, it's stuck right in that log. Oh, we just walked up to the arrow here. And it looks like there's pretty good blood on it. So we're going to pick up the blood trail and hopefully we can come up on them. Either you stayed up high here or went down here. Guess what's... You think? Well, we've walked no more than probably 150 yards. And surprisingly, the blood trail is drying up a little bit. I did smell the arrow and it smelled a little gutty and it looked like my exit shot um, because we were up kind of high came through towards the gut so I think as hard it, hard it is I think we're going to back out uh, and come back tomorrow morning. I think he's around here close uh, so hopefully we can find him tomorrow morning. We just got to the spot where we left off yesterday and I think the plan is to look for more blood and hopefully he just opens up and if not it might just turn into a body search so hopefully one of those things happens and we can come up on him soon. So we just got in here we can see uh, Max's bag and bow and Mitch and I are probably about 15 minutes behind those guys so they actually went straight up the ridge continuing where we were at last night but I don't know the way that the blood where we lost it in front of me here I don't know if you can be able to see it this ridge just goes right to the right and uh, we're gonna walk down there you know they're like I said 10 minutes ahead of us up there so we're at least gonna cover down this creek because right now we're sending a little creek bottom and I don't know any buck that gets shot it makes more sense to me that's the way he would go and um, so we're gonna keep walking I think you walk this bottom edge and um, I'll stay on the top of the ridge but just so you can see in the creek I think that's good so. all right I'll get down Oh, he's right there, Josh. He's right there. He's right there. Come here. Let's, let's get Max. We just found Max's deer. That we think that they're up to, on top of the ridge looking for him. Uh, yeah. Josh is gonna call him. Let's get him down here. He's right there. That's so. Cool. He's hey, right there. Come back down to the creek, dude. Right there. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> dude, we've been here for five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> He's right down there in the creek. No way, dude. Let's there go. He is. Awesome. That is so Good job, awesome, Max. dude. Oh my god. That's a stud. So I told him, I was like, just walk 50 yards. You know, you're gonna walk in the creek on the edge. Right. I'll walk right here. This is it was where he wanted to go. No way. Yeah, <laughs> Get your hands on him, dude. Let's yeah, go let's down. Go. Right. Oh, okay. First Iowa bow buck.
Well, it's the following day here, and like you guys saw, we came in here and found him pretty quickly. And just to reflect on the hunt a little bit, uh, Mitch and myself came in here uh, to this creek bottom here and did a hanging hunt. And uh, it was getting close to dark, and I heard a couple grunts on the ridge in front of me. We couldn't see anything. And then Mitch told me to get my grunt call out and throw a couple grunts at him. So I did a couple sequences, and it probably wasn't five minutes, and he came right to the base of the tree and uh, gave me a shot at 15 yards. And uh, we followed the blood trail sporadically for probably 100 yards and uh, saw where he came up the ridge and just totally lost blood right there. So as hard as it was, we decided to come back this morning. Uh, and like I said, it probably wasn't within five minutes. We found him right there. Uh, Mitch and Josh found him right in the creek bottom right here. Uh, Dylan, myself, and Hunter were actually on the ridge where we had originally thought he ran up. But uh, Josh and Mitch were right behind me and they followed this creek bottom up and found him laying right here. So I just, oh, I'm so happy and it came together perfectly in here and yeah, I couldn't be more excited. It's just insane to be able to come in on a big track of public land and get it done in one night. So it's Good pretty stuff, sweet. Buddy. Good stuff. It ended up being a pretty slow evening for me tonight. It was a spot that I had didn't have a whole lot of hopes for anyway, but uh, I didn't want to write it off my list without at least checking it out one last time before we get into the rut. Speaking of which, these next two weeks should be the best of the entire season. Not to say we can't have some good hunts late season or even late in the rut, but year in and year out, I feel like November 7th is the best day of the whole season. So you back that out a few days, anywhere from the 3rd to the 12th, 2nd to the 12th, somewhere in that range is usually where the best hunts of the whole season take place. So we're going to be hard at it every single day now. The entire pro staff, I'm sure, is going to be in the field. We're going to be putting together the daily video blogs, so keep checking those uh, every single day. We've got a uh, public land team, Skip's Hunting, Owen, Jared, and myself are going to be posting uh, video blogs just about every day so you can keep up with the action in as close to real time as we can possibly bring it to you. So it's, it's, uh, it's go time. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I got a good plan in place and some bucks to chase and there's not much more you can ask for. Well, I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big. <laughs>